Chapter 1 The Peace Pipe On the mountains of the prairie, on the great red pipestone quarry, Gitchy Manitou the mighty, he the master of life descending, on the red crags of the quarry stood erect and called the nations, called the tribes of men together. From his footprints flowed a river, leaped into the light of morning, or the precipice plunging downward gleamed like Ishkuda the comet, and the spirit stooping earthward with his finger on the meadow traced a winding pathway for it, saying to it, Run in this way. From the red stone of the quarry with his hand he broke a fragment, molded it into a pipe head, shaped and fashioned it with figures, from the margin of the river, took a long reed for a pipe stem, with its dark green leaves upon it, filled the pipe with bark of willow, with the bark of the red willow, breathed upon the neighboring forest, made its great boughs chafe together, till in flame they burst and kindled, and erect upon the mountains, skitchy Manitou the mighty, smoked the calumet, the peace pipe, as a signal to the nations. And the smoke rose slowly, slowly, through the tranquil air of morning, first a single line of darkness, then a denser, bluer vapor, then a snow-white cloud unfolding, like the treetops of the forest, ever rising, 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 till it touched the top of heaven, till it broke against the heaven, and rolled outward all around it. From the vale of Tawasenta, from the valley of Wyoming, from the groves of Tuscaloosa, from the far-off rocky mountains, from the northern lakes and rivers, all the tribes beheld the signal, saw the distant smoke ascending, the Pakwana of the peace pipe. And the prophets of the nations said, Behold it, the Pakwana, by the signal of the peace pipe, bending like a wand of willow, waving like a hand that beckons. Gitchi Manitou the mighty calls the tribes of men together, calls the warriors to his council. Down the rivers, o'er the prairies, came the warriors of the nations, came the Delawares and Mohawks, came the Choctaws and Comanches, came Shoshones and the Blackfeet, came the Pawnees and Omahas, came the Mandans and Dakotas, came the Hurons and Ojibwes, all the warriors drawn together by the signal of the peace pipe to the mountains of the prairie, to the great red pipestone quarry. And they stood there on the meadow, with their weapons and their war gear, painted like the leaves of autumn, painted like the sky of morning, wildly glaring at each other. In their faces stem defiance, in their hearts the feud of ages, the hereditary hatred, the ancestral thirst of vengeance. Gitchy Manitou the mighty, the creator of the nations looked upon them with compassion, with paternal love and pity, looked upon their wrath and wrangling, but as quarrels among children, but as feuds and fights of children. Over them he stretched his right hand to subdue their stubborn natures, to allay their thirst and fever, by the shadow of his right hand, spake to them in voice majestic, as the sound of far-off waters falling into deep abysses, warning, chiding, spake in this wise. O oh, my children, my poor children, listen to the words of wisdom, listen to the words of warning, from the lips of the great spirit, from the master of life who made you. I have given you lands to hunt in, I have given you streams to fish in, I have given you bear and bison, I have given you roe and reindeer, I have given you brant and beaver, filled the marshes full of wild fowl, filled the rivers full of fishes. Why then are you not contented? Why then will you hunt each other? 
I am weary of your quarrels, weary of your wars and bloodshed, weary of your prayers for vengeance, of your wranglings and dissensions. All your strength is in your union, all your danger is in discord. Therefore be at peace henceforward, and as brothers live together. I will send a prophet to you, a deliverer of the nations, who shall guide you and shall teach you, who shall toil and suffer with you. If you listen to his counsels, you will multiply and prosper. If his warnings pass unheeded, you will fade away and perish. Bathe now in the stream before you, wash the war paint from your faces, wash the blood stains from your fingers. Bury your war clubs and your weapons, break the redstone from this quarry, mold and make it into peace pipes. Take the reeds that grow beside you, deck them with your brightest feathers. Smoke the calumet together, and as brothers live henceforward. Then upon the ground the warriors threw their cloaks and shirts of deerskin, threw their weapons and their war gear, leaped into the rushing river, washed the war paint from their faces. Clear above them flowed the water, clear and limpid from the footprints of the master of life descending. Dark below them flowed the water, soiled and stained with streaks of crimson, as if blood were mingled with it. From the river came the warriors, clean and washed from all their war paint. On the banks their clubs they buried, buried all their warlike weapons. Gitchi Manitou the Mighty, the Great Spirit, the Creator, smiled upon his helpless children. And in silence all the warriors broke the redstone of the quarry, smoothed and formed it into peace pipes broke the long reeds by the river, decked them with their brightest feathers, and departed each one homeward, while the master of life ascending, through the opening of cloud curtains, through the doorways of the heaven, vanished from before their faces in the smoke that rolled around him, the Pakwana of the peace pipe.